All right, guys, if you've got a Whirlpool Cabrio or a couple other machines that are similar to this one that look like this inside with the agitator real down low like that, and it's starting to make some absolutely crazy loud noises during its wash, and sometimes it won't complete, sometimes you'll get a code on the screen that either that looks kind of like 5D, but it's actually supposed to be an SD. Uh, that means suds. Now, typically, that's supposed to mean that it is clogged because you put too much soap in it or whatever and there's too many suds for it to really drain properly um, and it can't spin properly so that could be the issue but if it's also making that really loud noise that's a really bad rumbling sounds like a motorcycle or a jet engine going off in your laundry room as it's trying to spin odds are it is going to be the agitator bushing uh this part here it's actually two pieces uh, that is just under this cap right here. So I'm going to show you how to change that out real quickly. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a screwdriver or in my case a flat head or a, a putty knife that I have here. And we're going to just stick it up under that lip. If you reach around and feel around, there's actually a little gap where a screwdriver could fit on one pot spot and just pry. And it pops off that little center cap. And inside there, you're gonna see this nut with a rubber washer. And we're gonna take our wrench and loosen that up. I already pre-loosened it. Um, I used a 7 16th and that was the right size. Now, depending on how tight that is, you might have to hold one of these flippers, one of these paddles uh, with one hand while you loosen it up with the other because it gets it's pretty tight on there. But we're gonna take that out. This has already been cleaned underneath that cap um, because I thought originally that this machine's bearings had gone bad, which are all underneath all this and you have to take all the tub out and everything else. People are gonna tell you, oh, you gotta take it completely apart. You gotta replace the top and the bottom bearings and the new rod that goes down in the middle. And you really don't. Well, you don't if this is the case. And this is the easiest way to tell that because either way, you're gonna have to take all this out. So you gotta wiggle it back and forth and it should come out. I'm probably gonna have to use two hands here. So if you use two hands and lift evenly, it'll come right up and out. It's a little discolored under there from my water, hard water. So as you can see, this is the part here, and this is the cap that you see. Uh, the kit, I will put this kit in the uh, description down below. But this kit is used for a couple different styles and sizes, so that's why you have two different of those larger rings, two different sizes. Um, I think this is the larger of the two. I'll check when I get this one off. And then you can see that second ring down inside there. So to get that out, you're just gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver or on a drill or by hand and unscrew those screws. Okay, so once you have all them screws out, pull this up. This is the main part. And then this is the part that is typically damaged. So you can see, I can spin it by hand and I shouldn't be able to. You've got the shaft here, which is toothed. And then you've got this plastic gear. Why then you would use a plastic gear, I don't know, or sprocket, whatever you want to call that. That just over time, as it's trying to spin on the agitator, spins freely and will just, as you can see, those teeth are shot. As it spins in full speed with tension on it, from the washer dryer, from all the clothing sitting on top of that agitator, and this is supposed to spin back and forth, that obviously will make that noise, especially once it gets up to speed to spin. It's gonna, brrr, this won't spin, this won't spin, and you know, you won't be able to properly get rid of all your water as the tub spins, or as the tub doesn't spin for that matter. So now we're gonna put the new one in. All right, so again, in this kit, you're gonna get two of these covers because it covers a couple different style washers, right? Different models. So just size it up and you can see that one of them is too small and this one is the right size. So I'm gonna use this one. We're gonna take this piece with the new teeth and slide it on. Okay, so you wanna make sure looking from the top that your teeth line up on the gear correctly. You don't wanna be smashing it on and ruining the brand new plastic gear. And it is pretty tight, so I can't push it down. So I'm gonna use a piece of pipe here. Um, this actually came with the bearing kit 
for the removal and the reinstallation of the bearing kit to help knock them out. But it just so happens to be the correct size for this. So I'm gonna use this to set over top of that and bang down with a little hammer. All right, so with a little force and a little hammering there, you can see that it's on all the way and it's flush all the way down to the bottom of that shaft. It's smooth right here, so it doesn't go any further than that. And then we just reinstall our cap. Slide that on, get your screws back in place. Okay, so we got that part screwed back in. I'm gonna drop our agitator back in. Again, line up the teeth, it should slide right on. Cool. The one with the washer, throw it back in there. Put your ratchet on, hold your agitator so you can tighten it on properly, because otherwise it'll just wanna spin. There's no need to necessarily torque it, you just till it seats. You take your cap cap I don't know it kind of tends to line up a certain way so just spin it till you can get it and then snap it back on that should fix the problem okay so I ran it through a cycle with some clothing in it and I no longer have the issue no more error codes no more SD or sub codes and everything looks great it's actually probably the driest the clothing has been out of the washer in a long time because it was unable to spin and would skip on those teeth so Hopefully this helps some people and saves you some time rather than changing those bearings out. Just check that little uh, plastic piece. Make sure those teeth are intact. If they're worn down at all, that is going to be your number one issue. And it's really easy and fairly cheap to replace as well.